Please get your authorized version of the scriptures, commonly referred to as the King James Version. Please get your authorized version of the scriptures and please uh, read along with me, word for word, verse by verse, of the scriptures we are going to be looking at today. Please, please read along with me. Be a Berean. The Bereans searched the scriptures daily whether these things were so. They were not there to be entertained. They were not there to have their flesh pacified, okay? They wanted truth. Here's truth, okay? All right? Read along with me, because my mouth does go quicker than my brain sometimes, okay? And vice versa. So, please, please. And again, uh, this is not, not the video that I intended to do. But you'll find out there, young brother, uh, that's how it goes. That's how it goes. Proverbs 22, verses 17 on to verse 21. Today is the 22nd. You read the proverb at least today. No? Why not? If you Christians, if you Christians, if you King James Bible believing Christians spent more time here than here, here, and jumping on bandwagons. If you would just spend more time here, things would be a lot different. But hey, it's all about entertainment, huh? Yeah. 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 Proverbs 22, verses 17 on verse 21. This video, again... Like I said, this is not the video I was intending or wanting to do. I'm not the boss. Period. <laughs> okay. I know that sounds kind of weird to say it that way. I, I get that, but it's like, I, you know, this is not, this is not about me. It's about this. And we are right now. <laughs> We are right now in Lent. We are right now in Lent. And um, as it has been reached out onto me, and um, we've talked about this before on the channel, but I have no idea where these videos are. I think the one is you are what you eat, but the sad reality of this social media construct is you are not uh, as relative, you are only as relative as your latest video. Okay, there are brethren out there who will go down the, the video list and pick a pick one. Uh, that does happen, but like I said, the attention span of man is a gnat. Okay, so anyway, this video is not really intended for you, dear saints, because you saints know this ought to at least, but if you don't. Refresher. Proverbs 22, verse 17 on verse 21. Bow down thine ear, and hear, and hear the words of the wise, and apply thine heart unto my knowledge. For it is a pleasant thing if thou keep them within thee. They shall withal be fitted in thy lips, that thy trust may be in the Roman Catholic Church. <clears throat> Excuse me. That thy trust may be in a YouTube preacher. That thy trust may be in the Lord. I have made known to thee this day, even to thee. Have not I written to thee excellent things and counsels and knowledge that I might make thee know 
the certainty of the words of truth, that thou mightest answer the words of truth to them that send thee. What, what greater admonition can you get right there? I mean, there are, there are many others, I'm just saying. What an admonition to read the Scripture. What an admonition to read the Scripture. You know? <laughs> what he has done, he hasn't done in a corner. Okay? Right there. Have not I written to thee excellent things in counsels and knowledge right here Jack right here the authorized version of the scripture right here okay here it is all the proof the truth everything you need is right here This, this shot in the arm mentality thing just chafes my buttocks. Get coconut oil. Verse 21. That I might make thee know the certainty of the words of truth, that thou mightest answer the words of truth, Scripture, to them that send unto thee. You ready? Be instant in season. Well, one second. I'm not going to mess that one up. Sorry about that. Sorry about that. I want to get this right. That I might make thee know the certainty of the words of truth. Study to show thyself approved unto God. That ye be a workman who that ye be workmen who needeth not to be ashamed. Rightly dividing the word of truth, which hardly anyone in Christianity does. That I might make thee know the certainty of the words of truth that thou mightest answer the words of truth to them that send unto thee. 2 Timothy chapter 4, verse 2. Preach the word. Be instant in season, out of season. Reprove, rebuke, exhort with all long suffering and feelings. No doctrine. And in 1 Peter chapter 3, verse 15. But sanctify the Lord God in your hearts and be ready always to give an answer to every man that asketh you a reason of the hope that is in you with meekness and fear. Verse 16, having a good conscience that whereas they speak evil of you as of evildoers, they may be ashamed that falsely accuse your good conversation in Christ. Note how it says in verse 15, the reason of the hope. A lot of Christians, and I've heard this and experienced this, they'll go to this uh, verse and uh, use this to justify answering every single question that is asked of us by people who don't want to know the truth, who think they are their own God. You run into this with atheists and stuff like that. It's like, well, we should answer all their questions. No, no. If they don't want to hear the truth, we give them what the Lord will have us to give them. And after that, leave them alone because they'll run you ragged in circles. Okay? All right? So we see in Proverbs 22, verses 17, on to verse 21, this admonition, okay, to read the scripture. Okay? Very important. Very important. And of course, that's something that in the dear Catholics is lacking incredibly. And the worst. Catholics you can ever run into are Catholics who think they know Scripture. <laughs> that they are the one. Remember, remember, you Catholics don't have the Scriptures. You do not have God's Word. You don't. You have a Bible. This, the authorized version, is forbidden by your church, Satan's church, the Church of Satan, Roman Catholicism. Okay? You don't have what God said. Okay? And when one of you come along you know, knowing, uh, thank you know, at least even your Bibles, that you, you guys are, you guys are messy. You guys are messy. And I'm, I'm, I'm going to try to be civil about that. So I'm just going to leave that alone. Hebrews 5, verses 12 on to verse 14, the close of the chapter. 
for when the time for for when for when for the time ye ought to be teachers. <laughs> this one always kills me. This one always kills me. Okay. How long you been saved? I've been a Christian twenty five years. Oh, really? What was that? <laughs> you think Christians are going through the time of Jacob's trouble? Or excuse me, you think Christians are going through the great tribulation? <laughs> yeah. Once saved, always saved is heresy. Yeah. Yeah. The, uh, the New Testament began like that idiot Tom over there uh, at the Council of Nicaea or whatever. <laughs> what an idiot. All right, okay. Uh, you've been saved how long? How long? 25 years. Hmm. Okay. For when the time... <laughs> Might have to do some Second Corinthians chapter 13 on yourself there, friend. For when the time ye ought to be teachers, you've been saved for 25 years. Yet you don't know nuts and bolts. I, brethren, how many of these Christians have I, Have you? How many have you? Saints. How many of these Christians? Who's, I've been saved for years and years and years and years. <laughs> and you don't know, you don't know tack one? When the New Testament began again? I mean, you people, what? 25 years, huh? That, 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 that's full of wonder. For when the time ye ought to be teachers, you ha ye have need that one teach you again, which be the first principles of the oracles of God, and are become such as have need of milk and not strong meat. And see, when you try to talk to a Catholic uh, about meaty things of Scripture, um, you got to remember, brethren, you have to remember, Catholics, when you talk to them, they're very philosophical. They are. They, they use philosophy quite well. And you got to be on your guard about that because sometimes, especially with the type of philosophy that they will employ sometimes, that could almost resemble a type of religiosity. Well, it always does, you know. <laughs> you really got to be on your guard about that. Just letting you know. For everyone that useth milk is unskillful in the word. And Peter talks about how we're to desire the sincere milk of the word. And hey, guess what, Catholic? In your little Bible there, if you even read that, you don't even, you don't know nothing. <laughs> um. In your little Bible where in the scriptures Peter says, you know, to desire as babes to desire the sincere milk of the word. Uh, your Bible doesn't have that in there. To desire the sincere milk of the word. They take that out. Gee, I wonder why. Keep them ignorant and keep them in the field as fodder. Yeah. For everyone that useth milk is unskillful in the word of righteousness, for he is a babe. For strong meat belongeth to them that are of full age, even those who by reason of use, put it into practice, walk and talk, have their senses exercised to discern both good and evil. And see the tie-ins here? Good and evil. Ye shall be as gods, knowing good and evil. No. Man cannot know good and evil in and of himself. Paul talks about that in 1 Corinthians chapter 4. Or it might be 2 Corinthians chapter 4. I get that one confused. You know, where the, the, the uh, cross-dressing Calvinist loves to point to so he can evade judgment. <laughs> Idiot. But anyway, note, note these verses. Uh, verse 13 and 14. Okay? Discern both good and evil. Verse 13. Word of righteousness. Scripture. Scripture. Okay? The ignorance of God's word, dear people, is one of Satan's greatest weapons. And when you got a guy who looks it, sounds it, you know that old axiom? 
If it walk like a duck, it talk like a duck, it quack like a duck, it's a duck. That's, okay, yeah. <laughs> but what happens when you got someone who's a clone? When you got someone who's letting someone else, even inadvertently on the one who, the, the one that everyone's putting on a pedestal, inadvertently doing the thinking for other people. That's one of those incidents as well. It walks like a duck, talks like a duck, quacks like a duck, but yet it ain't a duck. You, you, you wrap that one around your head for a little while. I'll let you play with that, okay? Psalm 119, Mem. Psalm 119, Mem. I tell people always, if able, uh, with the not Cain brother, uh, when you're reading Psalm 119, to identify Psalm 119. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Every bracket has eight verses. The numerology of Psalm 119 is staggering. The eight thing, and you do the multiplying and the adding and stuff like that. It's staggering, far beyond me. But I always tell people that you you, you see that? Do you see? Wait, 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 wait. You see where my finger is? You see that right there? Okay, I always tell people, I always tell people, learn how to read Psalm 119 specifically in that manner. But since this video is not intended primarily for the saints, it's Psalm 119, 97 on the 104. Because I, I, I always like, uh, you know, I will use mem instead of giving the verse numbers because usually, you know, it's just saints watch these things, okay? How, oh, how love I thy law. Where do you get God's law? From the Roman Catholic Church? Lord, rebuke you. <laughs> Lord, rebuke you. No, no. That's the uh, Church of Satan, okay? Oh, how love I thy law. It is my meditation all the day. Thou, through thy commandments, hast made me wiser than mine enemies. For they are ever with me. I forget who it was who said the thing about the plow uh, when uh, refuting a Catholic. Uh, I think it was Tyndale, I think. Someone correct me if I'm wrong, please. Uh, who said, I'll, the boy who drives the plow will know more of Scripture than you do. Something like that. Not verbatim. Okay? Um, you know, if a Catholic who has this zeal to engage in this frivolous, nonsensical, holy uh, holiday, holiday, not holy day, and that's going to be addressed. Uh, I, I beg your pardon. I beg your pardon. That's going to be addressed today um, very briefly in this video as well. Um, you know, holiday things. <sighs> Just crazy. If one of these Catholics actually got saved, actually were reading the scriptures with that zeal that they put on to Satan and his church and the traditions of men, if a Catholic that has that kind of zeal had that zeal in the right place, oh, oh, it's like when, when a Jew, a Hebraic Jew is actually a saint. It's like, you're going you to sit back there, man. He's like, okay, go get him, man. I've seen it. I've seen it. It's like, wow. I'm obnoxious sometimes. I, I admit that. <laughs> I admit that. I, yeah, I'm obnoxious. Yeah. Oh boy. <laughs> okay. But if. Anyway. Anyway. Point is for verse 98. You know, Catholic, if the Lord were to save you, He would guide you out of Rome. Eventually, you would be. You would come to the Scriptures. And with that zeal that you show for Satan, if you actually shoot it onto the Lord God, our Father, Jesus Christ, wow! 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 Okay? You would be wiser, fear the Lord, than probably a third of your Catholic friends. I have more understanding than all my teachers. Understanding departed from evil. For thy testimonies are my meditation. 
Then this nonsensical, stupid Lent thing. <laughs> What's your meditations? I understand more than the ancients. The implications is that the ancients got away from what? The precepts. Okay? And also the ancients, like the ancient religion of Babylon. Okay? Because I keep thy precepts. I understand more than the ancients because I keep thy precepts. I have refrained my feet from every evil way that I might keep thy word. I have not departed from thy judgments, for thou hast taught me. How sweet are thy words unto my taste, yea, sweeter than honey to my mouth. Through thy precepts, scriptures, this is where you find these things, okay? Through thy precepts I get understanding departing from evil. Therefore, I hate every, every false way. Yes, Catholic, I, I make no bones about it. I hate your church. I hate your God. I hate your religion. I do. I do. I make no bones about that. Okay? I make you personally? No. Your religion, your church, your tradition, your God, I hate. I don't make no bones about that. I don't. Okay? I don't. I don't. All right? Now, this thing about Lent, okay? Shit, this is shift. All right? Lent, you know, you, they have this time period where you're supposed to give up something for Lent and stuff like that. It's a form of visual eye candy fasting, okay? Matthew chapter 6, <laughs> our Father, which will be in the description box, okay, our Father. You know, you, you talk to a Catholic about, you know, watch out when you speak to a Catholic brother, sister, and you use the word dispensation, okay? Yes, dispensation is a scriptural word. Yes, dispensation is how we describe the divisions of period within scripture where salvation changes, you wicked, fake, grace, sleazy believists. <laughs> anyway, anyway, we're, we're, we're looking in Matthew about this because, you know, to the Catholic, you know, who's earning their day, don't know if they're going to heaven when they die. They're all, they're all saying, you know, about how the Sermon on the Mount is doctrinally for us today. It isn't. It isn't. But to instruct us in righteousness and see, here, here's the dingbat about this stupid Lent thing. Okay? Fasting and that, uh, there's a video that will be in the description about a box about fasting. Not, uh, it, you know, what fasting is, is touched on it in that video, but whatever, okay? Um, there are, you know, if you're going to fast for something to the Lord, you don't do Matthew chapter 6, verses 16 on to verse 18. Moreover, when ye fast, be not as the hypocrites of a sad countenance. I can't do that. I'm, 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 I'm doing that for Lent. Oh. Oh, good for you. Aren't you a good Catholic? Moreover, when you fast, well, what, well, what is it? What is it? Well, it's not fasting. You're giving up something for the sake of Lent. I'm not going to say Lent. I am going to I'm going to insult Rome every chance I get. Okay, thank you very little. Okay, um, Lent is a form of fasting for you Catholics. It is. So, moreover, when ye fast, be not as the hypocrites of a sad countenance, for they disfigure their faces that they may appear unto men to fast. Verily. I say unto you, they have their reward. I'm, I'm, I'm abstaining because Lent. 
Hey, hey, man, look at him, man. He, 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 he's a good Catholic. He's a good Catholic. You have your reward. You have your reward. But thou, when thou fastest, anoint thine head, and wash thy face, that thou appear not unto men to fast, but unto thy Father which is in secret, and thy Father which seeth in secret shall reward thee openly right away. Isaiah 58, Isaiah 58, verses 3 and 4. Wherefore have we fasted, say they, and thou seest not? Wherefore have we afflicted our soul, and thou takest no knowledge? Behold, in the day of your fast ye find pleasure and exact all your labors. <laughs> uh, verse 16 in Matthew 6 again. Moreover, when ye fast, be not as the hypocrites of a sad countenance, for they disfigure their faces, their faces that they may appear unto men to fast. Well, I'm not this... You, you, dude, most of you Catholics are going to miss the point. Because you're going to get a little butt hurt because uh, going after the head of the serpent. Okay? Go back to Isaiah 58. All right? Behold, in the day of your fast, ye find pleasure and exact all your labors. Oh, look at me. Look at me. Look at me. Exact your labors. Oh, when you're done with your little public display of religiosity, fasting nonsense. Okay? Uh, oh yeah, you probably do a little gluttony, don't you? Okay. Hey, I, I, <laughs> I, I, I have problems with gluttony myself. Okay. Just saying. Let's continue. Behold, ye fast for strife and debate, and to smite with the fist of wickedness. Fist of wickedness. Ye shall not fast as ye do this day, to make your voices heard, to make your voice to be heard on high. And Matthew chapter 7, while we're at it, huh? 21 and 23. Not everyone that saith unto me, Lord, Lord. Twice mentioned. Twice mentioned. Twice mentioned. Thank you, Bart. All right. Not everyone that saith unto me, Lord, Lord, shall enter into the kingdom of heaven, the actual physical, literal kingdom that is over there in Rome. No, excuse me, in Jerusalem. The kingdom of heaven. Jerusalem. The physical, literal kingdom in Jerusalem. Okay? That's what the kingdom of heaven is every single time in Scripture. Okay? Okay? Please, get that one right. Catholic. Please, at least get that one right. Come on. Anyway. But he that doeth the will of my Father which is in heaven, many will say to me in that day, I have been confirmed, I have been baptized, I ate the cookie, I drank the wine, I, I was good on Lent, I, I did, uh, oh, what's that thing, uh, the penance thing, and the Hail Marys, I've done... Yeah, yeah. Lord, Lord, have we not prophesied in thy name, and in thy name have cast out devils, and in thy name done many wonderful works? Then I will profess unto them, I never knew you. Depart from me, ye that work iniquity. And here in this uh, set of scriptures I have verse 22, Catholic work, salvation, and 23, personal relationship. <laughs> <laughs> Matthew 23 Matthew 23 Matthew 23 is describing the spiritual climate before the time of Jacob's trouble Matthew 24 people is talking about the time of Jacob's trouble which we saints don't have to worry about. We don't. Because saved people, us saints, in this dispensation, we get caught up, be with the Lord, okay, the redemption of the purchased possession, 
Okay. However, there's going to be a plethora effect of Christians in the time of Jacob's trouble. Absolutely. I I believe, I, I've told you this, I do believe that that man of sin, the son of perdition, is going to refer to his people as Christians. I really believe that. So, Anyway, let's read a little in Matthew chapter 23. See, Matthew chapter 23, describing the climate, the spiritual climate before the time of Jacob's trouble. Like in Revelation chapter 1, 2, and 3, you know, the description of the church, the churches, the bodies of the people. And also in Revelation 1, 2, and 3, okay, you can liken those seven bodies, churches, on two types of individuals. Okay, you can. All right, but Matthew chapter 23. Uh, let's read a little bit here. I, I know, I know, I know, I know. This, you, you didn't come here to listen to some guy read to you scripture. Uh, but Jeff, uh, that, um, that AI script, little wabbit before we get it. Uh, dear brother of mine, ours, our brother, brother Jeff, he, he has sent a couple of links about this artificial intelligence thing, reading Bibles. And I go, well, what's wrong with that? Have you ever listened to some of these things? It's, at it's atrocious. It's atrocious. It's, it's atrocious. Anyway, sorry for that weapon. Yes, brother, I, 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 <laughs> that horrifies me. Oh, do, do, <laughs> do. Okay. Matthew 23. I know, you, you didn't come here, right? You didn't click on this maybe to, to, uh, Hear someone read scripture to you. Cry me a river. Then spake Jesus to the multitude and to his disciples, saying, The scribes and Pharisees sit in Moses' seat. All therefore whatsoever they bid you observe, that observe and do. But do not ye after their works, for they say and do not. Remember, the oracles of God were committed unto who? The Hebraic Jewish people. Not Hamites or Japhethians, okay? All right? So they had the true words of God, the Torah and the, the prophets and stuff like that. They had all that, okay? But, like our Lord said, but do not after their works where they say and do not. For they bind heavy burdens and grievous to be born and lay them on men's shoulders. But they themselves will not move them with one of their fingers. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. But all their works they do for to be seen, Catholic, of men. Now, if you encounter a Catholic, I mean, Lent in its makeup is her heresy. Okay? It's heresy. It's it's First Timothy chapter four one through five which we will look at again today, okay, period, all right, but but all their works they do for to be seen of men, you know if one of you Catholics you know will be like Kayate and not say anything about it and you want to do that nonsense and I you know don't boast about it that's that is a different aspect even though the base of why you're doing it is totally off. But, you know, I'm, I'm doing this for Lent. I'm doing it. I, I, I. Me, 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 me. They make broad their phylacteries and enlarge the borders of their garments and love the uppermost rooms at feasts and the chief seats in the synagogues and greetings in the markets and to be called of men, Rabbi, Rabbi. Be, but be not ye called rabbi. When is your master? Even Christ. What does rabbi mean? <laughs> master. Okay. And all ye are brethren. And call no man father upon earth. A lot of people erroneously believe that your biological father 
that means that you can't call your father father. No. No. That's not what that's talking about. Note what is being discussed here. Okay. Verse 7. And greetings in the markets and to be called of men Rabbi, Rabbi. A title. What does that mean? What does Rabbi mean? Be, but be not ye called rabbi. For one is your master. Okay, take your little pen, put the line there. Okay, master, rabbi. Okay? Talking about titles. Like, uh, you know, some of these guys, um, you know, apostles. <laughs> no, no. There are apostles of men, but there are only 12 true apostles. Okay, remember, Judas Iscariot fell from that position, okay, and Paul was the replacement, not Matthias, okay, and Acts chapter 1, perfect illustration of that, okay, all right, but he's talking against, you know, reverend so-and-so, holy and reverend is his name, the name of Jesus Christ, God our Father, okay, this is not... <laughs> You, you, you know that, that ridiculous little wabbit? You know that ridiculous little house on the prairie? Okay? This was a little interesting fun fact. They, they claimed to be a Christian. And they were. Um, and of course, some of their episodes, they actually did read the scripture in some of them. They did. Mm -hmm. But interesting fun fact, you know that in the little house on the prairie, dumb, whatever, um, they never used the word father. They called everyone Paw. Paw. Like, what are they, putty titty or something? No, no, like Paw. He's my Paw. Why was that? Call and call no man your father upon the earth. That's why. But that's not what that's talking about. For one is your capital F, Father, which is in heaven. And again, verse 10, kind of the sandwich, okay? The sandwich, context. Neither be, call, be ye called masters. For one is your master, even Christ. Okay, and what do we read? Oh, we're, we're, we're reading, okay? But he that is greatest among you shall be your servant. And whosoever shall exalt himself shall be abased. And he that shall humble himself shall be exalted. That Geno Jenkins, who's entertainment. That guy, you, you talk about a guy pompous look on his face and you know and they talk about he, he's an apostle this verse 9 is talking about titles okay titles given to men okay there are positions there are there are pastors we, we've proven that there are teachers okay there are evangelists yes yes but those aren't titles to be lorded over the flock that Steven Anderson, dude, that sodomite guy. Yeah, Steven Anderson is a closet sodomite. Yeah, he, he, he ain't gotten over that one yet. <laughs> yeah, it's obvious. But anyway, that, that, that perfect example of someone who lords the title, I'm a pastor. You know? That's what that's talking about. Titles. Father, brother, father so-and-so, Jesuit father. Okay, what do they call the, the female uh, priests? Mother Superior. <laughs> uh, but woe unto you, scribes, scribes, scribble, write. And Rome does a lot of writing. Yes, they do. Uh, Rome, Satan, the Church of Satan has written you many Bibles. Okay? But woe unto you, scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites. What is a Pharisee? A Pharisee holds tradition right here. And God's word here. And in case of the Catholic, uh, you know, uh, tradition is here and the scripture is here. <laughs> okay? All right. So, a scribe is one who writes. A Pharisee is uh, someone who exalts tradition over truth. Okay? In other words, that's Catholic. 
That's Catholic. Or the Hasidim. The, excuse me, the Hasidim. The Hasidic Jew. Which are more in their morality, more um, fastidious, more, dare I say, I'm not going to say dignified, but they outshine a lot of Christians. Anyway. But woe unto you, scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites! For ye shut up the kingdom of heaven against men. For ye neither go in yourselves, neither suffer ye them that are entering to go in. Other place, Romans 1. Romans 1. You know, and you can also go to Galatians where so they can glorify in your flesh. But uh, we're not going to do that. We're just going to read really quickly uh, verse 32 in Romans 1. Who knowing the judgment of God that they which commit such things are worthy of death not only do the same but have pleasure in them that do them. Misery loves company. In other words. Okay. Back in Matthew 23. Woe unto you scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites! For ye devour widows' houses, and for a pretense make long prayer. Pretense. Eye candy. Okay? And the Sacrita Monita. The Sacrita Monita. The secret instruction of the Jesuits. An audio book that both myself and Brother Alexander Hartley narrated. His is better because he took his time. Okay, I, 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 I did one too, but I, I do make a mistake in it. Uh, but, uh, you know, it, it'll be there for you. Um, devour widows' houses. Jesuits. Oh, oh. I have a whole chapter in the Secreta Monita about, you know, how to devour widows' houses. Okay, so let's continue. Therefore shall ye receive the greater damnation, and for a pretense, pretense, pretentious, pretentious Christians. But for a pretense, for a shoe, for the drama, for the theater. Make long prayers. Why? But all their works they do for to be seen of men. Okay? Woe unto you, scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites! For ye can pass sea and land to make one proselyte, and all oh, this is so true, and when he is made, ye make him twofold more the child of hell than yourselves. Some of these ites, Ruckmanites, Denman writes, some of these ites, Okay, Bollinger Ites. It's like, wow, wow. <laughs> Twofold more the child of hell than yourselves. Wow, wow. Okay, anyway. Woe unto ye blind guides. If the blind leads the blind, both are going into the ditch. Okay, which say, whosoever shall swear by the temple, it is nothing. The temple dispensational difference okay and today our temple is what bodies not the buildings okay whosoever shall swear by the temple it's nothing no big deal but whosoever shall swear by the gold of the temple he is a debtor aha I wonder where their heart was yeah ye fools and blind Wow. Oh, loving Jesus just called them fools. You know, the Lord called the Herod that fox. Scripturally speaking, look up fox. Look up fox. Okay? You call someone a fox. Nowadays, you know, a foxy lady, right? Or some of you ladies, women out there, if I've even heard uh, a couple of women refer to men as foxes. <laughs> and you look in Scripture, it's like, oh boy, that's that's, uh, that's um, um, I'm not going to use superlatives at all. But our Lord was greatly insulting Herod 
when he referred to him as a fox. Okay? Just like Elijah mocked the prophets of Baal, um, our Lord, our Father Jesus Christ was very confronting. One thing thou lackest. Okay? And he didn't mince his words. He's the Father. Ye fools and blind, for whether is greater, the gold of the temple that sanctifieth the gold, and whosoever shall swear by the altar, it's nothing. The altar where they, they put the blood on the horns of the altar and stuff like that. Okay? But whosoever sweareth by the gift that is upon it, he is guilty. Like the, the cow that you're, you're sacrificing has more worth than the altar itself. But isn't it interesting when it comes to the redemption of our souls that the blood of Jesus Christ as a lamb without blemish. Isn't that interesting, huh? Isn't that interesting? Hmm. Ye fools and blind, for whether is greater the gift or the altar that sacrificeth, sanctifieth the gift. Whoso therefore shall swear by the altar, sweareth by it, and by all things thereon. Okay? And remember, this is before the death, burial, and resurrection. Okay? Doctrinally, the law was still binding. Okay? And whosoever shall swear by the temple, sweareth by it, and by him that dwelleth therein. And he that shall swear by, the th by heaven, sweareth by the throne of God, and by him that sitteth thereon. Woe unto you, scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites! For ye pay tithe of mint and anise and cumin and have omitted the weightier matters of the law. Look what it says first. Look what it says first. Judgment. Oh boy. Mercy and faith. You're right, Catholics have faith in the actual Lord Jesus Christ, but no. No. Their building and their their sacraments and, and their clothing and their church building. I already said that. And Francis and uh, Sosa. Okay, I mean, give me a break. Yeah, yeah. Catholics have faith on the Lord Jesus Christ. Ah, uh, uh. anyway, <laughs> Slazy believers. They have faith. They'll tell you about it. But it's in their faith. And hey, 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 Calvin is buddy. Uh, uh, who's, who's faith? Who's faith? Who's faith? I really don't like you. Anyway, so that was for a in specific individual. Let's continue. These ought ye to have done, and not to leave the other undone. Ye blind guides. In a, in a society that has, you know, you see a little child who looks to be two or three years old dropping F-bombs. Oh, it's so cute. This is harsh language that our Lord is using here in Scripture. Fools and blind guides, but oh, wait. Oh, wait. Wait. Wait till we get to verse 33. Okay? These are harsh words and language that our Lord Jesus Christ, God our Father, is using to address these people. Okay? Now, honestly, I mean, these are harsh. Scripturally speaking, these are very harsh words. Um, in a comparison of what kind of harshness we see today, desensitization, anyone? Oh, it's cute to see a little three-year-old girl Say the C word. We, we left that one day. Maybe the kids were over there, and the one kid said the F word, and the little girl said the C word. It's like, we're gone. <laughs> She's like, yeah, we are. It's like, because you keep me around a little child like that, I, you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to smack the father. Two, three-year-old, they're, oh, it's so cute, they're cursing, they're using F-bombs, and oh, it's so cute. Oh, 
to that father and what's wrong with you? Encouraging that? Anyway, the web. Ye blind guides which strain at a gnat. Swallow a camel. Oh, we see all that. You know, perfect example, example, Romans uh, 10, 14. Romans 10, 14. These heretics will say, it says believe. Okay? But that word believe in that verse is part of a sandwich that you have to eat the whole thing to get the nutrients. Okay? You see a lot of people pinpoint, like the eye of a needle, these little things, and then branch out to spread their heresy, ignoring the whole sandwich. Okay? Woe unto you, scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites! For ye may clean the outside of the cup and of the platter, but within they are full of extortion and excess. Thou blind Pharisee, cleanse first that which is within the cup and platter. Dispensational difference, okay? Why? Because the perfect sacrifice for sins, the death, burial, and resurrection of our Lord Jesus Christ, the bloodshed on the cross, was not yet given. The law was still binding. Okay? Thou blind Pharisee, cleanse first that which is within the cup and platter, that the outside of them may be clean also. Woe unto you, scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites! For ye are like unto whited sepulchers. <laughs> sepulchers. I'm sorry. I couldn't resist that. Whited sepulchers. Again, contextually, scripturally, our Lord is using some harsh, brutal language. And of course, the desensitized individuals like, you know, again, that's why I brought up, you know, I hear little children just dropping F-bombs. And man's getting better. You stupid atheists. I'm, I'm not sorry. I, I, I do. I have a lot more respect for some, some atheists. I do. Than most Christians. I do. I really do. But I mean, man's improving. Okay. <laughs> okay. If I did drugs, I'd like to have some of what you have. Okay? Woe unto you, scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites, for ye are like unto whited sepulchres, which indeed appear beautiful outward. Oh, I love Catholicism with all its ceremony, with all its pomp, with all its tradition. Huh? Looks beautiful. Looks beautiful. Put this also in context to all these demonations. Demon nations, demon nations, I should say. What do you mean, demon nations? Methodist, Baptist, Presbyterian, um, uh, uh, Church of England, um, Episcopalian, Episcopalian, and there's one that starts with an E. I can't remember that. King James Bible believing. Non-denominational. Hmm. For ye are like unto whited sepulchres, which indeed appear beautiful outward, but are within full of dead men's bones and of all uncleanness. Even so, ye also outwardly appear righteous on men. You have your reward. You have your reward. There you go. Here, you want you want you want a want a toothpick to get that stuff out of your teeth, huh? There's your reward. Even so, ye also outwardly appear righteous unto men, but within ye are full of hypocrisy and iniquity. And you gotta remember, I beg your pardon, beg your pardon. You gotta remember, this is before the death, burial, and resurrection. Okay? The law was still binding. Okay? You've got to rightly divide the word of truth. Okay? Because we don't save our own souls. We're saved by grace through faith. Okay? Today in this dispensation. 
while our Lord was on the earth, walking on the earth, at his first coming, uh, it was faith and works until he paid the price of the cross for me. And you, maybe, hopefully. Woe unto you, scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites, because ye build the tombs of the prophets and garnish the sepulchres of the righteous. All the pageantry, all the ornateness. Uh, have you seen some, uh, from Catholicism some of these skulls of men decorated with jewels uh, and like fake eyes put in their eye sockets and stuff like that? Um, there's a, there's a there's um, a Spanish name for it, and you know I'm 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 basic. I am a Spaniard, and I don't know that. So <laughs> whatever, but um, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I find that an interesting tie-in to think about. Woe unto you, scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites, because ye build the tombs of the prophets and garnish the sepulchres of the righteous. And say, I like this, if we had been in the days of our fathers, we would not have been partakers with them in, their, in the blood of the prophets. Verse 12, And whosoever shall exalt himself shall be abased, he that shall humble himself shall be exalted. <laughs> Wherefore, Catholics, ye be witnesses unto yourselves that ye are the children of them which killed the prophets. <laughs> Go ahead. Go ahead. Fill ye up the measure of your fathers. Go right ahead. Hey, you want this, you want this garbage? Go for it. Go for it. God, you want you want to lie, you want to see, you want deception, you want to look at me, man. Hey! <laughs> Go ahead. God will give it to you. Our God's like that. Verse 33. Loving Jesus. You know, the the red word Christians. You've Obviously, right. Red word Christians are people who only adhere to the words in red of our Lord Jesus Christ. Okay. Instruction and righteousness, absolutely. Absolutely. But see, the problem with that is doctrine. <laughs> doctrine. And to be instant in season, reprove, reprove rebuke with all long suffering, and doctrine. Okay, the majority and little stupid head, uh, Christy Burke. Okay, stupid head. I'm writing this big part. Stupid head. She she brought that up about how what Jesus said and Paul said seems to contradict. Uh, that two different dispensations. Jesus is a Jew, a Hebraic Jew, who was sent first unto the house of Israel under the law. He died, buried, and rose again the third day according to the scriptures. The kingdom of God, the spiritual, went first to the Jew, to the Jew first. But they prophesied, rejected it. Us Gentiles were grafted in to make the Jew jealous. This dispensation, you hyper-dispensationalists, began with the death, burial, and resurrection of our Lord Jesus Christ, God our Father, with the, the, the blood shed on the cross. Okay? That began this dispensation. There aren't two bodies. There aren't two Gospels. Okay, Watch out for that um, a Les Feldick guy. He taught that there were two Gospels, one to the Jew and one to the uh, Gentile. Uh-uh, uh-uh, no, no. Okay, What was going on? This is before the death, burial, and resurrection. He was sent unto no one but the Hebraic Jews, not the Hamites or us Japhethians. Okay? All right. All right. Keep that in mind. Verse 33, ye serpents, scriptural reference to serpent, the serpent was more subtle. Uh, and I do believe in Genesis chapter 3 is the very first appearance of serpent of any form, of any derivative. So when our Lord calls these ye serpents, what is he calling them? Rome is the church of Satan. And the Jesuits are who? Devils? Ye serpents. Get it? 
ye serpents, ye generation of vipers. How can ye escape the damnation of hell? Why? But all their works they do for to be seen of men. Again, these are harsh, stinging, brutal statements that our Lord is making. Yes, today you look at that, what, how? Again, remember, little three-year-olds saying the F word, and little girl, uh, little girls saying the C word. And can people even, no, you, you, you find them stupid TikTok videos, and they glor, it's cute. You know, and you're like, what the F word, and they're, <laughs> Even so, come, Lord Jesus. Train up a child in the way it should, well, it should go, huh? And in the fight, verse 6 today, huh? Verse 6 today. Yeah. Romans 14. Romans 14. <laughs> Romans 14. Romans 14. Him that is weak in the faith, receive ye, but not to doubtful disputations. Weak in the faith. A babe, an office, okay? A Christian who has been saved for 25 years and realizes that they ain't saved, and it's like, hey, Brad, I, I got a problem. <laughs> yeah, you do. Yeah, you do. Let's, let's, let's talk. But not to doubtful disputation. But see, enemies will use that and come in to pretend to be the weaker uh, brother and then drop a dirty bomb and uh, all Hades goes loose. And hey, bloke, you are my enemy and I hate you with perfect hatred. I am sorry for your loss. I am. I, I, that, that, that's hard for any man, even a tough guy like you. And my condolences. I'm, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I, I really am. I really am. I really am. I'm sorry. My condolences. You are my enemy, and I hate you with perfect hatred. But I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Let's continue. For one believeth he may eat all things. Another who is weak eateth herbs. Weak eateth herbs. Now, can you intuit that? Well, he's sick. Maybe. But in comparison with verse 1, weak meaning weak in faith. Okay? You run into this with a lot of Hebraic Jews who actually get saved. They want to, you know, the traditions of their fathers. Okay? And the big thing is eating pork. Pork, good. Pork is great. <laughs> I like me some pork. Okay? But, but that seems to be a hang-up. I mean, it really does. We're, we're going to get into this. Because it has part in with the with what this nonsensical, stupid limp thing. Okay? So, in verse 2, another who is weak eateth herbs. So, like, well, that means just he's reference onto a sick person. Uh, no, compare it with verse 1, no. No, it's talking about someone like, for an example, a Hebraic Jew who the Lord saves and realizes... Even a Hebraic Jew, scripturally for today, guess what? You can eat them shellfish. You can have a stuffed pork chop, stuffed with scallops and crawfish and lobster and all that stuff. Okay. That's really good, by the way. You have a stuffed um, pork chop stuffed with lobster meat. Oi, ay, ay, oi, vey. <laughs> wow. Talk about salivation. Okay. Salivation. Salivating. Okay. Verse 3. Let not him that eateth despise him that eateth not. 
Eateth, not eateth, the, the woman's name. And let not him which eateth not judge him that eateth, for God hath received him. Okay, what does this mean? What does this mean? You're a saint. You're saved today in this dispensation. If you want to eat pork, go for it. You can. You can. Yes, you can. You don't want to? Great! Good for you. Knock yourself out. I can't, we can't, as saints, judge one another on what we eat. Never done that. I might look at you funny. <laughs> okay? I might like, uh, just like you, vegan. I was a vegan once too. Okay, I was. I think three or four years. But, you know, okay, uh, you vegan, you could look at me funny. I, I'm eating my big old uh, back bacon pork sandwich. Okay? All right? You know, it's like, ugh. And I look, ugh. I look at you funny. But I'm not going to judge you for what you're eating. Okay? Like that, uh, there are some of that, that vegan teacher lady. It was like, wow. Talking about a skeleton with skin on it. Ugh. Ugh. Anyway. Verse 4. Who art thou that judgest another man's servant? To his own master he standeth or falleth. Yea, he shall be holden up, for God is able to make him stand. Now, people will go to this to defend their sin. But context is talking about what? What you eat. What you eat. Okay? All right? You, people do it a lot. Like they go to 1 Corinthians chapter 4, I believe that is. Or it might be, um, no, 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 one second, one second, let me find out. Because I keep saying that, and you know, my brother, praise the Lord, will put the thing in the description box or comment section. Uh, yeah, it's First Corinthians chapter four. People like to go to First Corinthians chapter four to defend their sin. They'll come to this to defend their sin. Look at the context of what it's talking about. It's talking about diet, what you eat. Okay. Now, here's where some wickedness comes in. Here's where some people will come to justify Rome while claiming to be their enemy. One man steemeth one day above another. Another esteemeth every day alike. Let every man be fully persuaded in his own mind. Under the law, it was the Shabbat, the Sabbath, Saturday. Okay? You can make a valid argument about the first day of the week, which is Sunday. Okay? But here's the thing. Under the law, there was a prescribed. You do your thing for me on this day. The Shabbat, the Sabbath. Which in the New Testament, in this dispensation, Seventh-day Adventist, is not a requirement even for the Hebraic Jew. Okay? Should the... Uh, I gotta write that down. Thank you, but... Uh, um, Calvinists are really uh, on the, this, the, they call it the Christian Sabbath. Okay? In this dispensation, number one, it's telling us what? Okay? That there ought to be at least one day that you as a saint reflect everything and do give everything unto the Lord. We do that every day. Yes, 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 yes. Okay? But, you know, that the thing is being said, you know, one man esteemeth one day. For example, you know, you want uh, Tuesday to be the day where it's like, you know what, my wife and I, we're just going to turn off our phones. We're going to read some scripture. We're going to uh, listen to Brother Alexander. We're going to, you know, try to belt a hymn out <laughs> every once in a while. Okay? That kind of thing. Okay? Okay? If you want to do it on Tuesday, great. If you want to do it on Thursday, great. You want to do it on the Sabbath? Great! You want to do it on Sunday? Great! The problem comes when someone comes around, like Mark the Messenger, okay, like the Seventh-day Adventists, like the Roman Catholic Church, like the Calvinists, come around telling you that today you have to do it on a prescribed day such as the first day of the week. 
and make it a doctrinal thing, a salvific issue, that's where you say, time out, you get away from me. Yes, we ought to give at least one day entirely unto the Lord. <laughs> of course. But see, in this dispensation, it is not prescribed, as it were, under the law. People will make the argument for the first day of the week, okay? But see, that is not the prescribed thing, okay? Okay? We don't have to worship on the Sabbath. Seventh-day Adventists have a lot of things. They're enemies of the Jesuits, okay? But they, they messed up. Anyway. He that regardeth the day, regardeth it unto the Lord. And he that regardeth not the day, to the Lord he doth not regard it. He that eateth, eateth to the Lord, for he giveth God thanks. And he that eateth not, to the Lord he eateth not, and giveth God thanks. Again, your day of worship. Okay? Alright? And people wickedly will come to that verse to tie it in, to justify yoking themselves up with Rome for one day in a month. Worshipping that man of sin, the son of perdition. And trying to put, uh, what's the saying? You can't make Christian what is pagan. Okay? And, like a year or two ago, asked the question again, where are you mass worshipers now? Hmm? Where are you mass worshipers to defend people's God-given right to have Easter, Lent, and eggs? Hmm? Where are you? Where are you? Anyway. For none of us liveth to himself and no man dieth to himself. Think about that. See, you atheists, you are of your father the devil. You're serving your father Satan. Okay? You, you're your own God. You, you, make, you decide what is right. You are your own God. You're serving your father the devil. We saints, we're serving our father Jesus Christ. Okay? So... For none of us liveth to himself, and no man dieth to himself. For whether we live, we live unto the Lord. Whether we die, we die unto the Lord. Whether we live therefore or die, we are the Lord. Yes, because we are the purchased possession. He seals us with himself. Okay? For to this end Christ both died and rose and revived, that he might be Lord both of the dead and living. But why now, and also, they will come to, uh, come. <coughs> people will come to this to justify <coughs> their sin. And I've run into this. But why dost thou judge thy brother? Or why dost thou set at naught thy brother? For we shall all stand before the judgment seat of Christ. All saved people are going to stand before the judgment seat of Christ. Okay? Context. What was Paul talking about? He was talking about a day. One day above another. Okay, what is he talking about? He's talking about the Judaizers who were coming out of that onto the faith once delivered unto the saints where the required uh, uh, thing of Sabbath was not required salvifically or doctrinally for us today. They talk about this in Acts chapter 15. Okay? That is what is being addressed here. That is what Paul is talking about. Okay, Because you have the dietary thing, which was for the Jews, under the law. The Sabbath day, for the Jews, under the law. You read Romans 13. Where is the Sabbath mentioned? Okay? Alright? That, in context, is what it is talking about. When people come to Romans 14 to defend... Their worship of the mass one day in a month. Okay? They come to this. They're equating something that is affixed to Satan with something that is of the Lord. That's heresy. And that's blasphemy. It's not 
what it's talking about. Context. That's not what that's talking about. Not at all. Okay? For it is written, As I live, saith the Lord, every knee shall bow to me, and every tongue shall confess to God. Now see, verse 11, there's a shift. Okay? He says, look! Look! Verse 10. For we, saved people, shall all stand before the judgment seat of Christ. Judgment seat is only for saved people. Shift. As it is written, As I live, saith the Lord, every knee, yes, yes, lost people, or people who don't go up at the redemption of the purchased possession, at the great white throne, every knee shall bow to me, and every tongue shall confess to God. Verse 12. So every one of us generalized statement. Look at the context, people. Okay? Verse 9. Judgment seat of Christ. A saints. Shift. As it is written. Every, including you lost people, me shall bow. Okay? Verse 12. So that every one of us, encompassing all people, you're all going to be given account to the Lord. You're all going to be judged by the Lord. We're all going to be judged by the Lord. Us saved people, we're going to be judged. Our works are going to be judged for rewards. Our salvation is fixed. Okay? You other people at the great white throne. Okay? All right? Let us not therefore judge one another anymore, but judge this rather, that no man put a stumbling block or an occasion to fall in his brother's way. For I know and am persuaded... By the Lord Jesus, that there is nothing unclean of itself. But to him that esteemeth anything to be unclean, to him it is unclean. Hmm. hmm. What does that mean? What does that mean? First of all, 1 Timothy chapter 4. 1 Timothy chapter 4. Verses 1 on verse 5. I, I beg your pardon. I beg your pardon. One second. All right. All right. First Timothy four verses one and verse five. Okay. Now the Spirit speaketh expressly, capital S, the Lord Himself, that in the latter times some shall depart from the faith, giving heed to seducing spirits and doctrines of devils, serpents, huh? Speaking lies and hypocrisy, having their conscience seared with a hot iron. Forbidding to bear marry not just Catholics, and commanding to abstain from meats, Lent, Muslims, poke, Hindus, poke. I might be wrong about that one with the uh, Hindus. Anyway, forbidding to marry and commanding to abstain from meats, which God hath created to be received with thanksgiving of them which believe and know the truth. Cross reference. Verse 14 in Romans 14, I know and am persuaded by the Lord Jesus, not himself, that there is nothing unclean of itself. But, circle that but, to him that esteemeth anything to be unclean, to him it is unclean. Let's continue in uh, 1 Timothy. For every creature of God, verse 4, is good and nothing to be refused, including pig, including shellfish, lobster, crustaceans, scallops, the works. Okay? All right? Eagle. All right? All right? For every creature is, for every creature of God is good and nothing to be refused if it be received with thanksgiving. Now remember how we started this about being in Scripture? For it is sanctified by the Word of God, Scripture, and prayer. Verse 14 in Romans 14. I know and am persuaded by the Lord Jesus that there is nothing unclean of itself, but to him that esteemeth anything to be unclean, to him it is unclean. What does that mean? But if thy brother be grieved with thy meat, 
Now walkest thou not charitably. Charitably. Self-sacrifice. Hey, little doofus. Fledgling. Charity and liberty are not the same thing. Wicked devil. Destroy not him with thy meat for whom Christ died. What does that mean? Verse 17. For the kingdom of God is not meat and drink, but righteousness and peace and joy in the Holy Ghost. What does, it, what does this mean? What does this mean? If we have people over, and they are vegetarians, and they don't like the fact that we like our pork, we're not going to rub in their face. We're going to have a little charity, which is self-sacrifice. It's like, okay, we're having guests. It's like, okay, babe, they, they don't like pork, so let's let's make a, hey, let's make that zucchini pie of yours. Really good stuff. My wife's zucchini pie, really good. Very good, okay? That's what this is talking about, okay? Today, you want to remain kosher and try to do that. Knock yourself up. Go for it, man. Do go for it. Go for it. Have, have a good time. Do it. But don't you dare come to me and say that it is a requirement salvifically. Don't come to me saying that because that's when you are a liar. Okay? So this is talking about, hey, I like my pork. You don't like pork? Fine. And if you come over, you don't like to see that? Hey, we can have a little self-sacrifice. Like, okay, hey, hey, wait, wait till you taste my wife's zucchini pie, man. Oh boy, like I said. <laughs> okay, all right. That's what that's talking about. All right. And also, people will like to go to Acts chapter ten. Acts chapter ten. People will say about Acts chapter ten. Well, the di there are those out there who's like, okay. The dietary restriction, they'll go to the thing about the uh, how the Lord says, anything you eat, it's cast out into the draw. Context. The law was still binding. It was in context to keeping kosher. Okay? That context. you got to remember that. Not, not applicable. Nor Acts 10, verses 9 under 20. I know, right? On the morrow, as they went on their journey, they drew nigh unto the city. And uh, on the morrow, as they went on their journey and drew nigh unto the city, Peter went up upon the housetop to pray about the sixth hour. And he became very hungry and would have eaten. But while they made ready, he fell into a trance and saw heaven open. And a certain vessel descending unto him, as it had been a great sheet, Knit at the four corners. And uh, that's not a verse for flat earth people. That is just, stop that. Stop that. Okay. I just remember in the one guy who we went off on each other, he pointed to that. It's like, anyway, anyway, anyway. And let down to the earth, wherein were all manner of four-footed beasts of the earth, and wild beasts and creeping things, and fowls of the air, and there came a voice to him, Rise, Peter, kill and eat. But Peter said, Not so, Lord, for I have never eaten anything that is uncommon or unclean. And the voice spake unto him again the second time, What God hath cleansed, that call not thou common. That's talking about the dietary. Let's keep reading. No, it isn't. No, it isn't. I, I, I get why someone would want to go to this. Because if you don't keep reading and aren't a Berean and don't compare scripture with scripture, you could, but, well, yeah. It's like, no. This was done thrice. Twice mentioned, three times. Three times for, you know, Pope Peter. Pope Peter. He was never a Pope. Okay, stupid. This was done thrice, and the vessel was received up again into heaven. 
Now while Peter doubted in himself what this vision which he had seen should mean, behold, the men which were sent from Cornelius had made inquiry for Shimon's house, and stood before the gate, and called and asked whether Shimon, which was surnamed Peter, were lodged there. While Peter thought on the vision, the capitalist spirit said unto him, and the Lord is that spirit, the Holy Ghost, okay? Behold, three men ask, uh, three men seek thee. Arise, therefore, and get thee down, and go with them, doubting nothing, for I have sent them. Verse 26. Verse 26. I have to mention this to you because you Catholics like to believe the stupidity that uh, Peter was the first pope. Um, there is no scriptural evidence at all to suggest that Peter ever was in Rome. The evidence that you guys come up with, well, you, you guys, you guys have killed the heroes that wrote history. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Think I'm going to trust Rome in anything? But uh, uh, Acts 10, 26, you know, Francis and, and Sosa, who is the head of Catholicism. But Peter took him up, saying, Stand up! I myself also am a man. What is that? Verse 25. And as Peter was coming in, Cornelius met him and fell down at his feet and to worship him. Oh, and Francis and even Jesuit priests and, of course, Sosa, um, they let men worship them. Didn't we read today about uh, Call No Man Father? Verses 34 on to 43 now. Then Peter opened his mouth. This is what the sheet vision is talking about. It's not alleviating the dietary restriction. That we already looked at in 1 Timothy 4. That's where you go to to show people this is, we can eat pork now. Not here. Why? Let's read. Then Peter opened his mouth and said, Of a truth I perceive that God is no respecter of person unless you're a Calvinist, unless you're a Catholic, unless you're a Pentecostal who has seen the Lord, unless you're black, unless you're White Japhethian. That's what this is addressing. The sheep. What God hath cleansed, that call not thou common. My little note here I wrote, Gentiles are in. It has nothing to do with the dietary restriction. Let's keep reading. Then Peter opened his mouth and said of a truth, I perceive that God is no respecter of persons. But in every nation, he that feareth him and worketh righteousness is accepted with him. Word which God sent unto the children of Israel, preaching peace by Jesus Christ, he is Lord of all. That word I say ye know, which was published throughout all Judea, and began from Galilee after the baptism which John preached. How God anointed Jesus of Nazareth, Christ, anointed one. How God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Ghost and with power who went about doing good and healing all that were oppressed with devils for God was with him. And we are his witnesses in the ain't Jehos. Of all things which he did both in the land of the Jews and in Jerusalem whom they slew and hanged on a tree. Yes, to Jew first, and also to the Greek. A Greek is a Gentile. The Lord at his first coming was sent unto no one but the Jews, not Catholics, not Hamites, not Japhetites, not even Shemites. Yes, Hebrews are of Shem, yes. But remember, they were taken out of Shem. Let's continue. Him God raised up the third day and shewed him openly. Not to all people, but unto witnesses chosen before God. Ye are my witnesses. Like it says in Deuteronomy chapter 4. Okay, about how the children of Israel were to be the world, a witness unto the world of the Lord at that time under the law. Okay. 
not to all the people, but unto witnesses chosen for God, even to us, who did eat and drink with him after he rose from the dead, and commanded us to preach unto the people, and to testify that it is he which was ordained of God to be judge of quick, alive, and dead. To him give all the prophets witness, that through his name, the name of Jesus Christ, who so ever believeth in him shall receive remission of sins. So the whole sheep thing has nothing to do with the dietary restriction. Okay? I see I see and this is this is what we're talking about. You would come you know, you, you don't read the scripture. You're just sitting there being entertained. You s expect someone to do the work for you. You don't search the scriptures yourself daily, whether these things be so. You would come to 9 on to verse 15. It's like, great! Sounds good! <laughs> <laughs> read the scripture. Read the scripture, people. Read the scripture. Okay. Now, I want to touch on uh, this, on Romans 14, okay? And, uh, and also there's, you know, like, uh, what is that? Um, in Corinthians, uh, no, not Corinthians. In, uh, wow, I forgot how well-worn this set of scriptures really is. In Colossians, uh, uh, where is it, where he says that? Uh, ah, in Colossians chapter 2, verses... 16 verse 16 and 17 let no man therefore judge you in meat or in drink or in respect of a holy day or of the new moon or of the sabbath people who want to yoke themselves up with rome for one day of the year and uh, worship the mass okay they come to this which are which are a shadow of things to come, but the body is of Christ. How dare you refer to that day in December as a shadow, uh, uh, as a shadow of things to come? How dare you? How dare you? You know, at least be a man. It's like it's pagan. I know it is. I'm going to do it. Fine. I'd have a lot more respect for some y'all. But when you come to here, or you go to Romans 14. All right, right? One man esteemeth one day above another. That's not what it's talking about. And holy day, not holiday. Holy day. There's a difference. A little difference. Difference. Big part. Difference a letter makes. Boy, if you guys would see my handwriting, it's like, Wow! What are you reading? What are you writing? Hebrew? <laughs> okay. Holiday. Holiday. Not holy day. Like I said, uh, dear brother Alexander, whenever I mess up, he's like, hey! I'm like, what was that? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Sorry. You know? Holy day. Holy day. See, people who want to defend paganism, yoking themselves up with Rome, like with Easter, like with the Mass, Christ's Mass, and all the other things that come from men. They seek here to justify it. Their justification for doing so is simply all things are law. Uh, where is that? That's 1 Corinthians chapter 6. Yes! Yes! See again, here it is. Here it is. All things are lawful for me. But not, uh, where is that? Um, Wait, 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 where is that? Where is that? Uh, uh, yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, oh, one second. <laughs> one second. Okay, I was looking right at it. Verse 12. 1 Corinthians 6, verse 12. This is what you, if you, you know, you want to be worship as a pagan does. Okay, you Christian. Okay. Here's your, and it cannot be disputed. It can't be. I'd have a lot more respect for you types of people if you would at least say, it's like, hey, okay, yeah, you, Scripture is right about Holy Day 
and Romans 14 about you guys trying to weave in Roman Catholic pagan holidays into that. Okay? The Lord rebuke you on that. You want to do it? Here's what you come to. All things are lawful unto me. But all things are not expedient. All things are lawful for me. All things are lawful for me. But I will not be brought under the power of any. And I have my name, Brad, written there. Right? Again, this holds true to the point of a God, our God is not a God of coercion. Okay? You have to make the right choices. You, as a, even as a saint, you want to do that thing, all things are lawful for you. Go, you know, go ahead. Go ahead. You shouldn't. Okay? But God's not holding the gun to your head. Okay? He's not. I would have a lot more respect for some of you, uh, especially you King James Bible believing Christians, who want to defend yoking yourself up with uh, Catholicism. I would have a lot more respect for some of you if you would at least, it's like, hey Brad, 1 Corinthians 6, 12. And that cannot be disputed. Can't. Can't. Yeah, right. Yeah, you can. Go ahead. God's not holding a gun to your head. You want to do that stupidity? That's on you. That's on you. It's when you try to go to Romans 14 and Colossians chapter 2 and then tie in Roman Catholic sat satanic paganism into the actual holy day that is found in Scripture. What is Paul talking about, by the way? What are the holy days? Hmm? And... I've encountered the Purim argument. Well, Purim was was uh, created by men. Where, 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 where do you read about Purim? Brad, why are you bringing this up? It's Lent. Men are lovers of their own selves. And you got people who are going to the scriptures even, trying to justify things that are pagan. I got a problem with that. I got a problem with that. The feast of the Lord. Number one, and the, the in the description box where we go Pesach, Passover, Passover. Leviticus 23, verse 5. Number 1. The Feast of the Lord. Well, they, and some will get killed. Well, these aren't holy days. Days holy being set apart. Oh, but the Mass is... Wow. When I called you on that, there's a certain individual from, via email. You never responded back. Anyway, in the 14th day of the first month at even is the Lord's Passover. Number one, Pesach. Number two, on the 15th day of the same month is the Feast of Unleavened Bread unto the Lord. Seven days ye must eat unleavened bread. Uh, what is, I got it written down here. Unleavened bread. Shag, shach, or shach, shach, hamotz. Hamotis. Yeah. Yeah. Sorry for the mispronunciation. Unleavened bread. Okay. The Feast of Unleavened Bread. Number two. Okay. Number three. Verse 10. Speak unto the children of Israel and say unto them, When ye be come into the land which I give unto you and shall reap the harvest thereof, then ye shall bring a sheaf of the first fruits of your harvest onto the priest. Number three, and the Hebraic is Yom Habikorim. Yom Habikorim. Yom Habikorim. Yom, day. Okay? First fruits. Okay? Passover. Passover, the children of Israel. Unleavened bread. Jesus Christ is our, sac our, fat, our sac uh, sacrifice. Okay? Passover meal. Okay, first fruits, this dispensation, first fruits of those of Christ. Okay, 
Number four. Verse 16. Even on to uh, 15 and 16. And ye shall count on to you from the morrow after the Sabbath, from the day that ye brought the sheaf of the wave offering, seven Sabbaths shall complete, shall be complete. Even on to the morrow after the seven Sabbath, ye shall number fifty days, Pentecost fifty, and ye shall offer a new meat offering, uh, Shavuot, Pentecost. Pene, Pente, okay? Feast of the Lord. And charismatic Pentecostals I have heard and run into will go to that and try, you know, eh, eh. number one, you're not Hebraic Jews. Number two, it's not a requirement, even for Jews, okay? Personally, do I personally believe, if you're a Hebraic Jew, do I personally believe that you should observe? I do. I do. Is it? Doctrinally, salvifically required of you Hebraic Jews in this dispensation for you to keep these. No! And see, when you start saying that the Jews today have to do this still, and that's Brother James, Brother James, you know, who wrote the book of James, our brother, even he ran into that problem. The, well, we got to admit it. No, we are one body in Christ. You're a Hebraic Jew, you're saved. You do not have to doctrinally or salvifically keep the feasts in this dispensation. Should you? I believe yes. Should you? I, I mean, should you? I believe you should. Is it a requirement for salvation to be right with God today? In this? No! No, it isn't. It isn't. It isn't. Okay? These are the holy days. Feast of the Lord. Okay? Yes. These are what Paul is referencing. He's not talking about man-made ones, you idiot! <clears throat> Sorry. Sorry. Number 5. Verse 24. Speak unto the children of Israel, saying, In the seventh month, in the first day of the month, ye shall ye have... A Sabbath, a memorial of blowing of trumpets and holy converse, conver, uh, con convocation. Uh, Yom Teruch. Yom Teruch. Thing there. You got a ha thing with a lot of Yiddish and uh, um, uh, Hebrew, okay? Yom Teruch, okay? What is that? Yom, remember, day. Day of blowing of trumpets. Okay, number six. Also, on the tenth day of this seventh month, there shall be a day of atonement, Yom Kippur. We all know Yom Kippur, okay? It shall be a holy convocation unto you. Ye shall afflict your souls and offer an offering made by fire unto the Lord. And the seventh and final, Sukkot. Sukkot, verse 34. Speak unto the children of Israel, saying, The fifteenth day of this seventh month shall be the Feast of Tabernacles for seven days unto the Lord. And the significance of uh, Sukkot, Tabernacles, during the Kingdom of Heaven, because if, they, if you don't go to worship the Lord uh, on the Feast of Tabernacles, He's going to withhold the rain from you. You ain't going to have any food. Significance, seventh final feast, Sukkoth, tabernacle, going to be on the earth, tabern tabern tabernacling on the earth. One of you will correct me, okay? Significant of that. It's different, different video, okay? All right? Okay? So that's going to be it. We didn't finish Romans chapter four, or 14 in its entirety. We don't need to, okay? That is going to be it for this video. There will be videos for you in the description box where we go over these things in greater detail than we have today. I beg your pardon, I'm messing with the, the this is my, hmm, this is the first one I started out with. First one I started out with. There isn't a page of scripture, of scripture, text of scripture, that doesn't have a mark on this. Anyway, anyway. 
thing about the dietary and the thing about the fasting of this whole stupid... Listen. Listen. Catholicism tells you that these days are required for salvation. No, they're not. Scripture proves Catholicism wrong again. Okay? Look, if, if you want to partake in paganism, if you want to do that, <laughs> go ahead. Go ahead. Fine, whatever. I, I don't care. You start saying that it's what God commanded, this stupid lint. Okay? It's what God has commanded, and that is scriptural. No, it isn't. No, it isn't. No, it isn't. Lint is a pagan thing created by men. Just like the Mass. Okay? And the worship of Astarte. Okay? All right? The holy days that Paul was referencing, we looked at. Holy days as set by God. You want to bring up Purim? Fine. Where do you find Purim talked about? Where are you mass, uh, mass worshipers during this season, huh? Where are you? Where are you? you know, praise the Lord, you know, the, the whole thing of digging that up, uh, the, the, the Mass on the one day of a month in December, that, that's old, yeah, we don't need to keep... But see, when you're experiencing emails about what's going on presently, it does have to be kind of reopened for the sake of you Catholics. You poor Catholics. You have no clue what the scriptures say. And you love to have it so. And you're being brought to hell by Satan himself and his church. And you think that this whole thing of Lent is of the Lord? It isn't. It's of the little G God of this world. But it is not of our God, our Father, our Lord Jesus Christ. And it's not sanctified by his word. You go let everyone, uh, one man, steam. Well, I esteem the day in December. You would, wouldn't you? Yeah. Very clever, subtle way to defend it. You're yoking yourself up with paganism when the scriptures clearly condemn what you're doing. But hey! All things are lawful for you. And like I said, like I said, like I said, if certain people would at least one time have to stones and not be concerned for their, you know, public opinion and their, their whatever. If certain people would come out and just, it's like, hey, 1 Corinthians chapter 6, verse 14. Okay? You're right. But see, again, when you try to take these things that are pagan, that come from Satan, and try to validate them here, that's where I got a problem. Rome is the problem, people. Rome is your problem. I pray that you get out, whoever you are, I pray that you get out of Rome. Come, let us reason together. We'll see you in the next video. Adios.